this is the llm and we are going to build it from scratch we are going to build an llm which can not just predict the next token but also answer your marvel question like who was the god of thunder the answer is thor pretty interesting right that's what i thought but don't worry i'm going to explain each part with awesome animation which took me weeks to complete so enjoy it process started with data and i found out one data set uh, which has scripts of multiple marvel movies so i thought that problem solved but after creating llm i figured it that it's not enough because it was able to predict the next token but uh, to create a llm that can answer our question it is not able to do that so i understood that we need a question answer data too for that i used chatgpt research and gemini caching and finally created qna data for marvel don't worry uh, i will provide all the data and codes in description let's move to the next phase this is tokenization first i tried with this tokenization method in this way but the basic tokenization let me predict the next word but it didn't help me with qna accuracy so i switched to bpe for better generalization and subword handling byte pair encoding is a subword level tokenization uh, so i changed the approach to this suppose you start with thank you thank you very much it merge common token pairs like th an and ing depending on the data frequency count all token pairs merge it into the new token th now string becomes like this it can handle unknown words like quick silver quick plus silver more efficiently than character level and more general than word level repeat until vocab size 5000 it, uh, or threshold reach here we go again Astra has summoned me to explain you some essential topic, so let's begin. Okay, now watch this. This animation shows exactly how BPE works. Tokens floating around, merging step by step, and building up a smarter vocabulary. It's like watching a language model learn in 3D. Third phase is encode text to tensor you get a sequence of integer each like is equal to token id it makes it ready to training now let's see this head class this is a single attention head that compute attention q k v these are the query key and value matrix derived by linear projection from the input x it is scaled by the square root of the key dimension the scaling prevents large value in softmax which can lead to vanishing gradient softmax apply to each row of the matrix to convert score into attention weight here the model chops the input into tokens then obsessively compares every word to every other word like it's got trust issues multi-head attention means it's not satisfied with one perspective it needs eight it's basically overthinking at scale with math but hey it's how transformers like chat gpt pretends to understand you impressive sure emotionally stable absolutely not i use flash attention which fuse this into a fast kernel using triton with optimal causal masking for auto regressive task most likely gpt style flat attention is an optimized implementation of scaled dot product attention designed to minimize the memory usage flash attention preserve the mathematical behavior of the standard attention formula but rearrange how the computation is performed to optimize for speed and gpu efficiency multi head attention transformers don't rely on a single attention head instead they compute attention in parallel across multiple head each head has its own weight projection compute attention independently these outputs are concatenated along the feature dimension projection that maps the concatenated output back to the model's dimension why we are using it allow the model to focus on a different part of the sequence and it increase the model capacity without increasing the individual head complexity now one of the important uh, topic which is mixture of expert layer moe is a conditional computational mechanism instead of activating all model parameters for every input moi selectively route each token to a few specialized subnetwork called expert for each input token the system decide which expert should process it this allow you to scale the number of parameter without increasing the computational cost per token first compute a gate function 
which compute a score vector. This vector reflects how relevant each expert is to a given input. We select the top k expert with the highest scoring using torch.topk. After this, apply softmax to the top k score to get weight alpha i. We select the top k expert using torch.topk, apply softmax over those top k get score and uh, use them to compute a weighted sum of their outputs. The final output is a weighted sum of top k expert output. Load balancing in MOE without constraint, most input might route to the same few experts, overloading them while others remain unused. This cause computational bottlenecks. Uh, solution is add an auxiliary loss that encourage equal usage of all experts. One common method is to penalize variance in the expert assignment across the batches. Here is the compute efficiency of a traditional feed forward network FFN versus a mixture of experts MOE FFN. Next phase is block transformer block with a prenom. This is a standard transformer block with a prenom architecture meaning layer norm is applied before each sublayer. Layer normalization normalize the input before sending it to the attention layer. You can ask like why prenom? It helps with gradient stability and prevents the exploding vanishing gradient in deep transformer. Now let's see the one of the important aspect of transformer architecture self attention. Multi-head self-attention mechanism applied to normalize the input produce context-aware representation. Transformers don't rely on a single attention map. <laughs> Instead, they spawn multiple heads that each attend to different tokens in parallel. <laughs> the outputs of these heads? They're concatenated and projected, allowing the model to learn richer, multifaceted relationships across the entire sequence. <laughs> Pretty smart, right? Feed forward network it is a multi-layer perceptron applied after attention. Residual connection, uh, residual are applied after both attention and FFN individually, each added to their own sublayer input, each output is added back to the original input. This allows the model to retain original information and improve the gradient flow. Okay, now let's see the component of our mini GPT class, token embedding. Convert token IDs into the dense vector representation, positional embedding. Since attention mechanisms do not have their in inherent sequence order, positional embedding are added to preserve the word order. Transformer block, a stack of transformer layer, each containing multi-head self-attention, feed-forward network, layer norm, slash prenom, residual connection. These blocks process the input sequence in depth, learning contextual relationship between token and it adds a positional information to the token vector. Now language modeling head, a linear layer that maps hidden states back to the vocabulary logits. This layer predicts the next token probabilities for each position. Next is loss function, cross entropy. The goal of training mini GPT is to teach the model to predict the next token in a given sequence all the previous tokens are there. This is done using cross entropy loss, which measure how far the model predicted distribution is from the true target distribution. For every token in every input sequence, the model predict a distribution over the entire vocabulary. The cross entropy compare this distribution to actual token. The loss penalize the model more when the correct token has low probability. The optimizer update the weight to improve next token prediction accuracy. Hyperparameter setup, uh, block size is 128 n embedding 256 n head 12 n layer 16 if we increase these parameters it will increase the expressiveness of the model but also risk of overfitting will be there next is uh, one of the important aspect which is the optimizer uh, we are using adam look at the model parameter which is like uh, near to gpt2 model optimizer update the model's weight during the training why uh, ADAM? Uh, ADAM W is uh, ADAM plus weight decay. In standard ADAM, L2 regularization is added inside the gradient calculation which cause the interaction with ADAMS, internal adaptive learning rate. And in ADAM W, weight decay is applied outside the gradient update. So it acts as a true penalty on weight magnitudes and independently from the adaptive gradient. Learning rate, high learning rate from the start can cause a very unstable loss. Warm up uh, refers to a starting training with a small learning rate and gradually increase it to the target learning rate over a number of steps. Now let's see a batch sampling for large language model. 
This data sample ensure the model only learn to predict the next token, not the future ones. This setup closely matches the training of a auto regressive language model. Final step is training and generation, teaching the model to talk like Marvel character. Validation check is uh, set to the every 500 step. We check how it perform on validation data. What we see is training loss is keep do going down. Okay, in generation, let the model speak now. Let's test it. So let's try with the IM. Uh, here as we know like expected answer can be like Groot or Iron Man based on the Marvel script So let's see what the model has given. Yeah, it is correct. Uh, it has provided us the Groot which is correct answer I am not done yet. Let's test with more until I am satisfied. I Think it's working There's some minor issue that I expect from you to solve <laughs> That's a real Marvel style dialogues. The model learn tone, punctuation, character flow from scratch, which is pretty amazing. For the next video, if you want to see a LCM from scratch, then do let me know. We will build it from another different interesting topic or like series movie. Then we try to see how is the result. And I'm thinking to provide this model on hugging face also. So do let me know if you want that. And I will also tell you the process how to publish it that's it for this video thanks for watching uh, if you want to explore this topic in more detail i have written a medium blog you can check out uh, link is in the description i will see you in next week bye bye and be happy you're never alone in the furthest realm of the digital world there lived a solitary robot who called himself lex he possessed nothing but a single scroll and the ambition to become the word pirate king a ruler who would traverse the boundless oceans of code without a single word to his name he delved into the Grand Library, a realm of stories and forgotten tongues where he encountered the loss. Lex had to forge his own path, learning language through patterns, failing time and again in his training against the storm. Yet through perseverance and relentless evolution, Lex's persistence, his refusal to accept defeat or weakness, that was what ultimately elevated him. He became more than just a robot. Through his triumphs and failures, he became a king ruling not through force but through the very words that bind the digital realm. Impressive. Bye bye.